Hello and welcome to our worship service for the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 9th, 2021, which is also Mother's Day. And so we wish a very happy and joyful Mother's Day uh, to all our moms out there. You're watching a worship service from Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Mound, Minnesota, and I'm Pastor Mike Mishak, and I'm glad that you're joining us today. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. I invite you to pray with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake, he forgives you all your sins. And so, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful goodness, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who hears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who had heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that, are, that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Join with me, please. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace and mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we continue a closer look at 1 John, and we are going to talk about the power of love. The power of love. We might ask the question, where does the water come from that we have in our houses? We turn on the tap and the water flows out and we, most of the time, we don't think twice about it. But how does that water get there? How does it get to our house? Well, we know, of course, that there's a source of the water, whether it's a lake or a river or a well, but then there's also this very complex series of pipes and pumps and different ways through which that water must flow until it gets to that tap at our kitchen sink or wherever it is that we get our water. And so the source of the water is perhaps far removed from us, and yet it's right there available for us to drink or to wash, whatever we need it for. It's there. And when it's not, we really miss it, don't we? When something breaks down in the system and uh, we don't have that water freely available to us, we really notice the miss that, that, that it's missing. <laughs> in the same way, sometimes we might ask ourselves, well, how does Jesus get to me? I hear about all the wonderful things that Jesus did. He was baptized. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good. He died on the cross. He rose again. He ascended to heaven. But all of that seems so far away for me. It's something that happened far away geographically. It's something that happened far from me is in terms of time. So how can I receive that? How can I get the benefits of what Jesus accomplished so long ago, so far away? from me. Well, 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8 tells us this. There are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. 
So these three are the means by which God delivers to us our Savior, Jesus Christ, and everything he's accomplished for us through the Spirit and the water and the blood. When it says these three agree, literally it means they these three are for the one thing. They are for the one thing, the purpose, the goal, the work of these three witnesses is one and the same thing, and that is to bring Jesus to us, to deliver to us all that God has accomplished through Jesus Christ, and to bring it to us so that it's there, it's available whenever we need it. The water here in 1 John refers to Jesus' baptism. The blood refers to Jesus' death. Most likely there was a false teaching at that time when John wrote this epistle that said that, yes, the Spirit of God came upon Jesus when he was baptized in the Jordan River by John, but then these people taught that somehow the Spirit of God left Jesus before he died on the cross, because they couldn't comprehend how it could be that God could die for us. But John tells us that, no, it's important that we understand that Jesus comes to us by blood as well, by the blood that he shed for the atonement of sins, for the washing away, for the forgiveness of every sin when he died, when he shed that blood on the cross. And the Spirit, then, is the delivery person, we might say, the one who brings to us all those wonderful gifts that Jesus won for us, delivers to us everything that he accomplished, as we said, so long ago and so far away, and yet it's right there. It's available to us. So the water refers first and foremost to Jesus' baptism. And we hear uh, a wonderful explanation of this in the reading from Acts chapter 10 that we heard today. It tells us, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And so he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So the Spirit of God, God himself was certainly at work in Jesus Jesus was God in human flesh, and all that he accomplished was to release us from the oppression of the devil. Secondly, the, the blood in this passage in 1 John refers to the blood, of course, that Jesus shed when he died on the cross in his suffering and death and resurrection, his crucifixion. Peter says to the people there in Acts chapter 10, they put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day. So God did not leave Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. No, not at all. As we talked about in previous weeks, the blood of Jesus atones for our sins because it is God and man in one inseparable person that dies on the cross for us. And so his blood has immense value. It can atone. It can pay the price. It does pay the price for our sins, as the blood of just another human being could not have done. And then there's the spirit, the, the life giver, the truth. Peter says in Acts 10, these people have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. And Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And so there, in baptism, of course, we see these three things, these three witnesses working together once again. The water, the blood, and the spirit. Well, as I said, the theme of our sermon today is the power of love. And when we talk about that, I'm mean two different things by that, both the power to be loved or the power to receive love and all that that accomplishes, and then the power to love others, the power to give love to others. 
And so now we see that the baptism, the water, the blood, and the spirit are not only referring to those historical events that happened to Jesus Christ, but also to the way that they become ours through faith. So first of all, all we think of our baptism. The Holy Spirit works through the physical element of water plus the word of God, both to give us Jesus' love and to empower our love for one another. Secondly, when we think of the blood, we are reminded of the Lord's Supper, where the Holy Spirit again works through the physical elements of bread and wine, plus the word of God, to give us the true body and blood of Jesus. And what does that deliver to us? Well, it gives us, of course, the love of Jesus for us and empowers our love, empowers us, again, to love one another. You know, sometimes we, we love to sing this old hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? And really, if you think about it, the, the answer to that question is no, <laughs> I wasn't there. That happened a long time ago, uh, a long distance away. I wasn't there. And yet, why do we sing this hymn then? Why do we sing, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Because in a very real sense, the answer is yes. Yes, I was there. Yes, I am there. Because all that was accomplished there is now received. Received in the water of baptism, in the blood of the Lord's Supper, because of the work of the Holy Spirit through the word. So everything that Jesus accomplished when he was crucified and when he rose again, all of that is mine through the work of the water and the blood and the spirit. A little bit earlier in this chapter in 1 John 5, 3 and 4, it tells us this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we think particularly of the commandment that God gives to mothers and fathers to love their children, and the commandment that he gives to us, the children, to love and to honor our mothers and our fathers, our parents, and all those who are in authority over us. John says his commandments are not too hard for us, and you might say, well, what in the world? How can he say that? <laughs> Sometimes it's a very hard thing to love, isn't it? And certainly the work of a mother to love her children has got to be the hardest job in the world. Sometimes it's hard to love our children. And sometimes it's hard for us to love and honor our parents the way that we should. So how can he say his commandments are not too hard for us? Well, he goes on to say, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And then he goes on to say, this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So because of that overcoming, because of that victory, we are able to keep his commandments. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. What is faith? Well, faith is receiving Jesus as he comes to us, as we have already said, through the witness of the water, the blood, and the spirit. He comes to us over and over again through these means in order to empower us, to give us the victory, to enable us to love as God would have us to do. Jesus has overcome the world. He will overcome the world in you. He will overcome the world through you. Yes, mothers, you have an immense power, power that God gives you through the word and through the blood and through the spirit so that you can do the great work that God has given you to love and to teach, to discipline, to guide your children in the ways of the Lord. So once again, if we return to that question we asked at the beginning, you know, how does, how does all of this get to me? All those wonderful things that 
that Jesus did way back when in a far and distant land, how do they get to me? Well, through the water and the blood and the spirit. And guess what? The Holy Spirit has chosen you. He's chosen you, mothers and grandmothers, to be his delivery people. And so today, we pray for our mothers. We, we pray for them and we support them and we seek in every way to encourage them and to provide for them and to enable them to be able to do that great work that God has given them. And even beyond that, there are those mothers and grandmothers whose children have grown and left the house who continue in this wonderful work of the Lord. And in fact, all of us, both men and women, can be a part of this work. So let's think about that today, and let's think about that this week. How can we as individuals, how can we as a church continue to encourage and uplift and support the mothers and the fathers so that they can teach the faith to their children, so that they can be confident in the victory that overcomes the world? so that they can rejoice in the gifts that Jesus is giving to them through the water and the blood and the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray to our God who does not remove his steadfast love from us or reject our prayers for his whole church and for all people according to their needs. For all who come and hear God's word, that they would rightly fear God and learn what he has done for their souls. Let us pray to the Lord for the work of our missionaries, that in every nation there would be people who fear God, do what is right, and believing in Jesus, receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Let us pray to the Lord for our mothers, that with thanksgiving we may honor them aright, as Christ honored and obeyed his mother while here on earth, for all women with child, that God would give them safe delivery, and for all women who long to have children but cannot, that they may find their consolation in Christ and his unfailing love. Let us pray to the Lord for our nation's leaders, that God would cause them to serve wisely for our good in accord with his revealed order. Though we do not always know what the master is doing by the authorities he gives, that we would make ample use of the freedom Jesus has given in his name to ask the Father for everything as friends and fellow sons. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially those that we name before the Lord now, that they would receive from God all his good gifts of healing for the body, grace to bear the cross, and finally a blessed end and the gift of eternal life in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord for all who come to the Holy Supper, that having received the testimony of God in the water of baptism, they may also receive it in the body and blood of Jesus, and so overcome the world by faith in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, Father, we commend all these for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let's join together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And once again, we wish a happy Mother's Day to all our mothers and grandmothers. And of course, we include in our prayer for blessing all women. And may God bless you and give you a joyful day and strengthen you in the work that you do. Thank you.